I know a young man whose parents are currently going through a divorce. He has taken it really, really, really hard. He's 19, had his dad at a pedestal, and then everything fell apart. And of course, there's two sides of the story, but there were huge problems that. And what I've noticed as well myself is when I went through our divorce, the impact that separation or divorces that have on families are absolutely huge on the children. You're trying to do it as good as possible, but it doesn't always work out the way you hope it will affect those kids because you're emotionally so stuck in that. And you know, how do you deal with, with when things change and how to deal with that? And I have a special guest with me today with a special clothing line, which she will tell you more about it later, which is George Beasley III. And he had, when he grew up, that his parents went through a separation, but were able to work it all out. But I believe that still made an impact on him. And, and throughout his life and that process, uh, swindling became very popular. And of course you're thinking of my language right now, Bart, what are you talking about? But it's hassling and moving things around and reeling and dealing, and you know what I'm talking about. What do you do when you do the reeling and dealing, which if we're really honest, that is what you and I do with God all the time. God, just this once, or we're going to do it this way. We'll just spend an hour with you later. Is that reeling and dealing or what? And today, this show is for you to help you and teach and equip you. That's when you go to God's design for your life. It is going to be better as the reeling and dealing in your life. George, welcome. Thank you for having me. So you were a swindler. And, and tell me, how did that all come about? Well, you know, growing up in Miami, Florida in the 70s, the, the atmosphere was set with race tracks, dog tracks, horse tracks, uh, gambling that was surrounding, you know, the, the, the culture in Miami, Florida. And uh, so as a young kid wanting attention, wanting affection from his father and all these other things pulling on the family structure, um, it was easy for me to go out and get involved with what I saw because I was a hurt kid from my mom and dad relationship. Right, right. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of because, you know, I did that to my kids. So, and it made an impact. It definitely made an impact. So, did you like it? Did you like the swindling or was it more for you to stay busy? Well, you know, anything that you see on television, first of all, as a kid, it has an influence in your life. Right. So, growing up in Miami, Florida during that time frame, I saw those things as very adventurous. It was, it was exciting, you know, to, at, at the time that I thought, to get involved in. But then when you start seeing the after effects of it, you know, individuals getting shot, stabbed, oh. uh, when you start seeing, you know, uh, people dying in the streets, that, that has a role to play in your life and helping shape you. Yeah, it really does. So, did you continue that once you passed high school? Did it have an effect on your grades? <laughs> yes, it was happening while I was in high school. And some of that was in junior high, high school. And after I even had joined the military, um, some things that continued on because it was a, a kid who had a broken heart from his family. Mm. And so I had nothing else to resort to or there were other things that were there, but my mind was so set on really trying to show them if this is what you think about me by separating, then let me show you what I think about you by rebelling and doing what I wanted to do. You know, I had a friend like that. Um, I, I found, I met with a girl last year in juvenile hall and she was prostitute. And she did it to show her dad that he had, was not really a dad over her. And she's dead today. So it, it was hard to see the choices that were being made, you know, and the consequences. But that's not you and I, I'm glad you're not. So, so you, did you continue? Did you, once you got out of high school, did you chose to go to college? Or if I would be a swindler, I would probably try to reel and deal my life without school, which is a whole lot more fun to continue. Well, you know, I, I wouldn't consider myself as a, a, <laughs> I've been a swindler, you know. Um, but you were. I, well, yeah, in a sense, I mean, you know, I, I sold drugs and, yeah. un, you know, unfortunately because of the choices that I made. Yeah. Because your choices will determine your destiny, even other people's choices that yeah. they make, like in my parents' case. Now, what about choices. an army? Because I would say, go to the army that fixes it all, right? Well, you think that fix it all, you know, but I joined the Cause army. Because they're tough on you in that army, that boot camp, how do you get through, you know? Yeah. So that might just 
wipe it out, whip it out of you, you know? Well, you know, the Army taught me, the Army taught me discipline. And also it, 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 brought, it brought a level of, of commitment, you know, for me at that time. I was committed. You know, one of the things that they told me when I joined the Army, once I got past my training, they said, the, the moment I went in and my training, they told me, they said, this is your Bible and I am your God. When, the, when they showed me, they said, this is your Bible, they were showing me the military regulation manual. And they said, this is how you govern your life. And the drill sergeant was, I am your God. I will run your life. You will do what I tell you to do. Oh. But I had an attitude. So I went in with an attitude. I'm saying, yeah, ain't none of my God. Were you one of those that I'm, had I'm to do, what do what the toothbrushes on the tiles in oh, the bathroom? Oh, trust me, we did all that. That is real, that oh, stuff? Oh, yes. <laughs> but that's for, that's for soldiers who get in trouble. So I got in trouble. Okay, so how did you get through? Did you finish your years in the, in the Army, or what, no. what did you do next? Unfortunately, this, and this rarely ever happens, but it happened to me. I got court-martialed. I had, I had, a, had a court martial in basic training, and it was something that I had got myself involved in, though I did not do the actual crime, and, but I became the recipient of the punishment. And I was given six months. You were the example for the whole... I was, I was, well, I mean, I was wrong with what I did, but still mm -hmm. I wasn't the one that actually committed the crime. Yeah. And, uh, and so, but I was given six months in uh, the stockade and God... Now, I looked the word stockade up, you know, different country. Can you tell the viewer what stockade is? Well, just a prison. Oh, just a know. prison. Okay. But a, a lower level prison. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. Nice. And, uh, and so I... You know, I, I was given six months there, then I would be released. Well, while I was there, God intervened in my life, and he sent a high school coach that I didn't recognize at the time, was sitting across from me at his desk. We graduated, and he had to come and fill in for the, the weekend reservist. And he's talking to me, saying, okay, what happened? You know, what'd you do? And he said, you know, what's your name again? Because yeah. he had to know who was in a part of his unit. I want to hear more about that. Interesting, isn't it? What's your name again? Stay tuned. You want to hear what his name was and what happened there. We'll be right back. Peace is beautiful. However, finding peace is not always easy. But the result when you get there is life-changing. Are you ready to dream bigger, pray bigger, believe bigger, and live bigger? If you want to break free from dull Christianity, and transform to a vibrant, active believer. What are you waiting for? Dare to Believe Big teaches you to believe like never before. It is time to grow, evolve, and expand. Discover four words that can transform your life. Are you ready to build a relationship with God? God has incredible plans for you. It is an exciting opportunity and you can live each day with a high expectation of what God will do next. Don't wait any longer and sign up for your new free membership. Sign up now and get a free gift at daretobelievebig.com. With me is George Beasley III and you got to hear his story. He has done handling and all kinds of stuff in the army. He ended up in trouble but then also became a pastor later on, and today he's in clothing design. And you wanna find out what, what this show is about, because I think when we learn to stop the reeling and dealing and turn to God Almighty, we start living that John 10, 10, so popular Bible verse that you start receiving that abundant life. And did you ever get to that point that you wanted that abundant life or before you met that old coach, or were, were you, did you even know about God at the time? Well. You know, I didn't know God, but my grandmother, she was a devout Christian. And every time we would go to her home in Miami, Florida, you were going to hear the gospel. And so the only time, you know, I wanted to go was when she had snacks. <laughs> but I knew I had to hear the gospel. I, I was going to hear, you know, it's, it's so, but yeah, you know, she, she talked about the Lord, but I, I didn't know she God. She probably prayed for you. Oh, all the time. Yeah. yeah. All the time. I, I, I attribute me coming to the Lord by my grandmother praying for me all the time. Wow, so, so this coach shows up so while you're in trouble. Up. I have graduation that just occurred in basic training. Everyone was gone, and I was in the stockade at that time. I was in this little prison at the time at, at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. And so he had, to know, he, he had to know who was in his unit, and it was just me. 
I was the only one. One person? One person, because everybody else was graduated, they were gone. And, but I was a part of his unit, but I was incarcerated. So make a long story short, he said, hey, you know, if I get you out of here, what? he said, okay, where are you from? And I'm looking at him, he looked familiar, but I hadn't seen him in probably about a year, year and a half. I told him, I said, I went to America Senior High School, and he says, wait a minute, what's your name again? He looked at it, he says, George Beasley. And he said, do you know who I am? I was your high school wrestling coach. And I said, wow, he got me out of confinement and they sent me to the military's toughest retraining brigade, which was at Fort Riley, Kansas. How was that? It was, it was the toughest retraining brigade. All the, all the branches with the exception of the Navy go there when you have been uh, demoted, if you have received some type of confinement, and if the powers that be allow you to get out of that and get re, re, reassigned, you have to pass that. Yeah. So it's all, it's all mental, you know, because it's, it's a mental game. They break you down. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So. And so I passed it, you know, flying colors because I was an athlete. I was in good shape. But the mental part, you know, I had to really deal with because of all the things I went through in my life and my family and the abuse of my father, you mm. know, um, physical, physical abuse and mental abuse. You know, those things made me more hardened in my heart. And, and because of what I learned on the streets, you become tough. So when you're that tough, that's perfect for the Army, actually. Yes, yes. That, that is just perfect. So how did you move forward with your life from that point then? Well, so after having been released, I was retrained, brought back into the military because it was called the retraining brigade. They retrain you, and which helps with the recidivism rate. And the, the issue was, Though they retrained me as a soldier, I still had a broken heart. So I took the same wasn't mindset. Wasn't dealt with the real problem. Correct, correct. So I was now sent to, to, uh, to Germany. I went to Germany to a place called Baumholder, and I was, was now starting a new career as a serviceman in the army. Well, same. But your same. old roots were still there. The old roots were still there. So that, but doesn't the army realize that when the old is still there? It's going to come back? Well, I mean, they, did, they didn't know that. You know, they don't yeah. understand the things that I understand now in terms of yeah. spiritual warfare and so forth. Right. But I got to Germany, and as a young 19-year-old guy, having been involved with the illegal activities that I was involved in in Miami, Florida, I brought that over to Germany and began to sell cocaine and quaaludes and oh, marijuana, wow. you know, and getting involved with those types of things and, you know, making a ton of money as a young kid, which a lot of times I was afraid because I was making mass amounts of money. You know, and, and knowing that I could be caught at any day, and one day I was caught. And I was uh, given 10 years in, in Leverhorn Federal Penitentiary. Oh, man. 10 years. It stopped your career, it stopped everything instantly. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow, so now what? Well, then, from that point in the military, you, you, you go through a thing called the CA, Convening Authorities, and they retry your case just to make sure the due process was served. And in that point, they saw that I had done a year and a half. They looked at my case and they said, well, we couldn't prove that you actually brought these drugs into Germany. But you so, did. But yeah, I, of course I did, you know. Yeah. And um, what they did was they overturned my case. And so. That's like a uh, mercy from God. Oh, yes. That's like eight oh, yes. and a half year less serving time. So you're dismissed. Now you're on the street. You're sending home, I assume. Now I'm, what? I'm back in Miami, Florida. Because you're going back to your old. Because every grounds. time they bail you out. Yeah. So did you go back to all the old stuff or were you now at a point that is like, I need to change my life? Well, you know, when I was there in Leavenworth Federal Penitentiary, I got in trouble in Leavenworth and then they gave me six months in maximum security. That means I'm no longer in the general population upstairs. I'm now in, in maximum security, which is about two, two floors down uh, in Leavenworth. And one day I just, I prayed. I said, God, if you're real, get me out of here. I said, but did I, you know God even? Oh, your grandma. Well, my, gra grandma my grandmother. You know, I mean, I, I knew God was real, but I didn't know him. You know, yeah. like yeah. most people, they call upon God when they get in trouble. Lord, come yeah. bail me out. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and I've done it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. just this time. Don't give me a ticket. I was speeding. I won't do it again. Right. right. Yeah. Done right. that. Been there. And that's so. what I did. And so I said, God, if you're real, get me out of here. Give but me a wife. But you gave him permission. Y yes. Yes. Did God answer? He did. How? Four things I prayed. I said, God, if you're real, get me out of here. He said, give me a wife that's younger than I. I don't know why I said that part, but I did. <laughs> I said, her be in the military. I'm going to live in California and make me a preacher. Now, I should have been what? more specific about the preacher what? part. 
<laughs> I never said be a maybe Why a pastor. Why did you want to pre be a preacher? You know, because we were having a we were having an act to pass time in 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 maximum security. We were having a a impromptu um, uh, talent show, and so everybody was locked up in their own cells. And when it came to me, I didn't know what I was going to do. So I decided to be a preaching pimp. You can't. What? That's not the proper thing to say <laughs> in, in, in our culture today. Because so many people look at preachers, they're pimps, look at them. They dress like this and they have these cars and they're, they're taking people's money and so on and so forth. But I decided to be a preaching pimp. I was a pimp for my segment of my talent at that time. And I was sounding like a Baptist preacher and acting like a pimp. So the guys that was in their sales listening to me, they said, man, you sound like a real preacher. You ought to be a preacher. And my heart started beating so fast. And I said, God, I'm sorry for making fun of your people because I respected Christians. That's one thing I've always done. Even though I was just a sinner doing yeah. the things that I did, yeah. I learned how to respect Christians, you know, because my grandmother was one. That's and, good. Uh, and then, wow, a, a preaching pimp. <laughs> Stay tuned. You want to find out more about this. We'll be right back. Bar TV. The stories we bring, the problems we show, the solutions we present are real. They are raw and they are authentic. The stories we share are with real people. Are you struggling or do you know someone that has problems? We want you to know that you are not alone. Many can relate. Are you afraid? God wants to give you peace. Do you feel unloved? Know that God loves you. God wants to give you love, peace, joy, and hope. It's all about the real deal. Barb TV wants to share with you its resources, answers, and hope. It is time to not live in a mediocre life, but for you to step into your full potential. God has great plans for you. We have great answers, resources, and hope. BarbTV.org or 855-515-5550. So you prayed a fourfold prayers yes. at the time. They called you the preaching pimp. Yes. What a start. Uh, that is something like God is going totally to get involved in. I could just see him smiling, looking at it. My question to you is, did God answer it? He did. You know, he, you know and just the fact that you said he was smiling. He, I, he, I could he probably see him was just laughing, laughing, saying, I'm you like, have no idea what you're getting ready to get into. <laughs> And, um, but, I, but I prayed, you know, I, I prayed. I said, God, if you're real, I said, get me out of here. I said, here's four things. Number one, give me a wife that's younger than I, which I don't know why I said that. I said, but, and that she's in the military. I want to live in California and make me a preacher. The first thing happened was they overturned my case. They mean in the military. Now, the, you had a 10-year sentence, I, right? I had a 10-year sentence, yes. How long did you serve? I did a year and a half. Wow. Total, total year and a half. And, uh, and so the convening authorities, the CA, they retried my case while I was there. They looked at different things and they determined time was served. Well, I got out, went back to Miami, Florida, and quickly I reverted back to my old ways because yeah. I knew how to make fast money. Yeah. Even though I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to end up going back to prison. I would rather have died before I go back to prison. And uh, so I met this young lady. I get on a public bus, meet this young lady, and... I knew that she was going to be the woman I was going to spend the rest of my life with. Wow. And she did, did up, you know God? Well, you knew him a little, yes. Okay. Well, you, from, that, from that one encounter, at, yeah. you know, I didn't receive him into my life at that time, but it was you one just, of those yeah. Aladdin lamps, you know. Yeah. You, you, know you, pick, you pick that lamp up and you rub it and get, your, like the genie get and your little God blessing and put it out. back on the... Yeah. Yes, yes. And okay. so I met so, my wife and she joined the Air Force. Everything you prayed for. Everything I prayed for, and I came out to the California, made the Air Force Base. So did you became the pastor? No, no. Um, that didn't happen until I had came home from work one day. I was working at Carl's Juniors, and I was upset with the world. I'd left Miami, Florida. I'm 3,600 miles away from where I was brought up and raised all my life, you know, and come out here, and I don't know anyone. So I was frustrated with life, and I came home from, uh, from work one day, I saw the 700 Club. I didn't know anything about the 700 Club, never heard about it before, I turned the television on, and I heard this guy talking about Jesus, and I turned the channel, and I didn't want to hear about Jesus. I didn't know it was God, but I felt something to tell me to turn back the second time. 
I turn back, yeah. they're talking about Jesus, and they're saying, you know, hey, you, you've tried drugs, you've tried these things, and so on and so forth. And I said, okay, you know, this guy is kind of saying some things about my life. And I turned. Third time, I felt this impression. That was Holy back. Spirit. And see, I didn't know that. Of course not. You weren't there yet. Because I wasn't serving God. So you went back again? The third time, and here's what got me the third time. He said, as a young man, you were in prison, and now you are out, but you're locked up in your mind. You're locked up in the prison of your mind, and only Jesus Christ can set you free. Now he has my attention because that was he you. could not have known I was in prison. Prior to that, he said, you tried drugs, you tried this, you tried that. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. But now he says, you've been to prison, and only God can set you free. And at that moment, I said the prayer that I was asked to pray on television. I fell on my knees. I cried like a baby. I couldn't stop crying. And I knew at that moment, Barb, that God had radically rocked my world. I knew my life was changed. Wow. I knew it. So everything changed. So how, because you're working at Carl's Jr., God has gotten a hold of your life. Did it put a, did it change things instantly? For me, it changed things instantly. instantly. And I can look in your eyes and tell you that's my story. I had no more desire to do any drugs, no more desire to steal, no more desire to do any of the things. During my encounter with God in my living room, in my apartment complex, I kept seeing a hand. I saw this hand come down and go in reverse. And God was showing me those are all the times my father was punching me, mm. the times he slapped me and called me stupid and dumb. And and when, when I called on God, I felt that the world I was carrying, it was like Atlas. I had my world on my shoulders, and my world was drugs, sex, armed robbery, alcohol, stolen cars, yeah. you know, violence and things. And I was like a pit bull, and Satan was my master. And he pulled that chain off of my neck, and that world came off my shoulders. You were and set And that's how free. I knew I was set free. Wow. Yes. You became a pastor. Now, today you're no longer uh, serving as a pastor. You always will be. Yes. Because that's, that's what I just heard. But why did you change after 10 years into clothing design? Tell me a little bit about what happened there. Well, first of all, you know, being in ministry over 30 years, yeah. and then um, the Lord blessed my wife and I to, pa to pastor a church. We started from scratch 10 years here in the Thomas. But back in my high school days, I had a passion for design. And I had a shirt that tore on my sleeve one day, and I mended it. And I said, well, man, if I can, if I can mend this little thing like this, I can do other things. Did, did you make that shirt too? Uh, yes, the, the whole outfit, yes. Oh, that looks terrific. Thank it you. It looks good. Now, tell me a little bit. What's the name of your company? The company is G. Franklin Fashions. Okay. And it's a men's clothing apparel. Uh, and God gave me an opportunity to meet a... To, to a I, I talked to a guy on the telephone I never met. He's in England. And God brought me into relationship with this man that owns a textile company. And I, not even knowing this guy, was a former believer. And all I wanted was some nice English fabric. And we, we got in contact with each other. And next thing I know, I lead the man to the Lord, brought him back to God. He's going to church now. And he says, I own a textile company in England. And, and perfect. Yes. It's all set. Say it one more time so the viewer can go check out your website because uh, it looks great. It Thank looks you. just great. It's gfranklinfashions.com. Oh. So uh, we're running out of time, but if there is one word that you would like the viewer to know right now because of what you've gone through, and what stuck to me the most is that what happened with your dad impacted a very long period of your life. So if, if there's viewers out there right now that have dealt with what you have dealt with, what, what would you tell them? All things are possible. Wow. Well, thank you so much, George, for being on the show. You so appreciate it. And just want to share a little thing with you here today. Interesting scripture the Lord led me to, but I think you'll get it because the guy, Jacob, here in the Old Testament in the book of Genesis, got in trouble and left. And then God spoke to him and made him promises that we can still see today. I want to just read something for you because this was not just for Jacob. But this is for you too. So why don't you listen? Meanwhile, Jacob left Perseba and traveled towards Har Haran. At sundown, he arrived at a good place to set up camp and stop there for the night. Jacob found a, so a stone to rest his head against and lay down to sleep. As he slept, he dreamed of a stairway that reached from the earth to heaven. 
as he slept, this is where you wanted to end, friends. As he slept, he dreamed of a stairway that reached from the earth up to heaven. And he saw the angels of God going up and down the stairway. At the top of the stairway stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather Abraham and the God of your father Isaac. The ground you're lying on belongs to you. I'm giving it to you and your descendants. Your descendants will be numerous as the dust of the earth. They will spread out in all directions, to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth will be blessed through you and your descendants. What's more, I am with you. Are you hearing that? And I will protect you wherever you go. One day I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have finished giving you everything I have promised you. You might say, this is not for me right now. And I would say you're wrong because I see George's story all over this. And what is God is saying right now, that there is a golden ladder coming down to earth and angels are going up and down to help you, to serve you, to guide you and to direct you. And on the top of it is God Almighty himself wanting the very best for you. So my question for you is, do you want it? And we'd love to help you and minister you with that. So go to us, 855-515-5550, or go to our website, barbtv.org. And if God can change me, if God has changed George, God longs to look down at you from that staircase and say, I'm going to help you too. God loves you, and he wants to help you find out more. So when you became a Christian, were you afraid that your family was going to shun you or even worse? Yes, uh, I, I, one of the relatives that we had our private meeting in front of everybody, he just slapped me on the face. And I was married and I had my little boy at the time. He's not little anymore. Bringing Best. these books. And then everybody was all the, uh, you know, it was execution daily. I even had to face watching an execution. Uh, ex Execution? Execution out in the street. I saw it with my own eye. He wow. was worried that he's going to go to hell because of his sin. So he kept, uh, that's why he kept questioning me, like, if um, my sin is going to be, God is going to forgive me. So I, he did, he had so much fear of dying and so much fear of going to hell. Oh my and God, and God said, I was waiting all his life. For that moment. Just that sentence yeah. your dad said. I want to see Jesus. Yeah.